Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Superman, issue number 12. Let's just start talking about the comic book. I don't, I don't know what to tell you about this. This, this was a better issue. It still just wasn't a great issue. Just, um, anyway, this is the Unity Saga, uh, House of L, part six. Brian Michael Bendis is the writer. Ivan Reyes is the uh, artist. Uh, Joe Prado and Eau Claire Albert on inks. Alex Sinclair doing the, co the colors. And Josh Reed doing the letters. Reese Prado and Sinclair do the cover. And Adam Hughes does the variant cover. And of course, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster created the Superman family, like as a whole. But they created Superman. Um, here's the thing about this. This was a beautiful book, beginning to end. All of it, it was really beautiful. Except there's one problem here. Um, Bendis is promising that he's forever changing the history of Krypton all that stuff. Just the idea that, you know, it wasn't Bendis who did this. This happened beforehand that they made um, Superman's dad a little evil. Um, he was a little bit out there, but, you know, like they brought him back. He was still the loving father, but they brought him back. It's a little weird. He should have stayed dead. Um, he genuinely should have stayed dead, even for that. You know, so like you want to bring him back for a little bit, find out it's not really him, something, whatever, okay? Opinions are opinions. But, dude, you do realize this is Superman, right? This is the first superhero character that was ever in comic books, all right? We could talk about freaking Tarzan. We could talk about the Shadow. We could talk We could talk for hours, man. Lone Ranger, Zorro. But Superman, dude, this was something entirely new, all right? This dude comes up, and you're talking about Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster, and then why would somebody like Brian Michael Bendis come along and just think that he could not just, you know, mess with a couple things, you know, like, oh, let me give a deeper explanation. No, no, just straight up start changing things. Listen, man, unlike comic skaters, I do not throw around the word sociopath and think I actually know what it means. And a lot of those jackasses never even had the common sense to go and look up that term on the freaking Internet. You know what I'm saying? So they don't know what the hell that word means. They don't know what sociopath means. And I'm not using that word to describe Brian Michael Bendis, but I am going to make a very amateur diagnosis, not a jackass diagnosis like them, an amateur diagnosis. I did study psychology. Um, I didn't get my degree in psychology. I did transfer a lot of my, my psych credits over, though. Um, and I still, to this day, read psychology today. And uh, there's this thing called uh, narcissistic hubris. All right. Um, it's kind of like a, a double entendre. All right. It's, it's like doubling down on a word. Brian Michael Bendis is full of hubris. Brian Michael Bendis is undeniably freaking narcissistic. All right. This guy thinks his crap don't stink. And it's one thing to say you love Superman. It's another thing to say that you're going to change Superman. You're going to change the history, Krypton, like the basis, the foundation that Siegel and Schuster did to create this character. I mean, you're talking about 10 years was the process to finally get Superman on paper from these two geniuses. And like, how long did it take for them to finally, like what, it was six issues later, they finally explained his origin. I mean, they, they busted their asses and they got this character down and nobody has been so full of themselves as to think that I'm just going to change stuff. You know what I'm saying? Look, you can go back and we could talk. I did a spotlight and story on one of the biggest changes to Superman that's only now being, you know, to Krypton, I should say, that's only now being changed. It's the only thing that existed uh, and still exists pre-crisis, you know? And now, I mean, what, like, what is this? They are literally changing the history of Superman. And by they, who, who am I really talking about here? Narcissistic hubris. Okay, this is not an official diagnosis. I've never even met Brian Michael Bendis. I've never sat down with him, but through his interviews, through reading him, you know what I'm saying, and me being amateur at this, amateur hour, all right? This is this is my thought. That's just it's just my thought on this. As good as this book was, as good as the the nuance of this book was, the main subject here is that we're changing the history of Krypton in a major way. And of course, like, here's the thing about it. Every single person who talks about Brian Michael Bendis, whether it's good or negative, positive or negative, they always say, Brian Michael Bendis doesn't care about your stupid continuity. He's going to do his own thing. And he's so narcissistic about it that he's even willing to change the origin of all comic books ever.
think about that. And therefore, why I would make this amateur hour diagnosis. It's disgusting when you really think about it. But hey, here I am still reading Superman, hoping for the best. You know, realistically, the best I can do is take the advice of all the comic book greats that came long before Bendis showed up um, in Caliber Comics, just and then eventually to Marvel, uh, and then here. Um, and that is that nothing lasts forever. A lot of times things will, but realistically, once they have another crisis, they're just going to go back to the original origin, right? Right? Professor Bill Comic Book University. Class dismissed.